expansion slots. So in our last lecture, we mentioned the expansion slots. And I said, hey, we're going to go into that, and I'll explain to you what PCI, PCIe, X1, X4, X8, X16, AGP, what all these expansion slots are. Well, here we go. So here's a couple of expansion slots. I'll give you a picture of them again. Um, over here, we have our standard PCI or PCIx slots. These small black ones, number two, are PCIe X1. Number three is an X16, PCIe X16. If we look over here on the right, I have a picture of a laptop. And number four is a mini PCI slot, which is this little card here is actually a networking card, a Wi-Fi card for that laptop. Um, and then number five, back over here, this is another type of expansion called memory. Uh, we'll talk about RAM in a different lecture. We're going to focus on these different card types for now. So PCI and PCIX. Uh, PCI was originally developed back in 1992 for network, video, audio, input-output, modem, storage, and host card adapters. Uh, usually they were found as a 32-bit uh, expansion card, and they operate at 33 megahertz, which is really, really slow compared to what we operate today, right? If you think about your processor, you go to the store, they're usually 2 or 3 gigahertz, which is a thousand times faster than a megahertz, right? So much, much faster than we were operating at. Less frequently, they actually had 64-bit, which would operate at a whopping 66 megahertz. It was an older standard and has been pretty much replaced by PCI-X. Um, when you look at PCI-X, it is a faster system. It is 64-bit and it is 133 megahertz, uh, which again is still very slow compared to the processor, but again, this is an expansion slot. And when we get further from the processor, you're going to see speed start slowing down significantly. Um, the nice thing about PCI-X is it's backwards compatible. So I can take those old cards out of his old 1990s machine and pop it in to a PCI-X slot and still let it work today. So you can still use those old stuff today if you wanted to. Um, you're able to mix PCI and PCI-X cards together, but if you do that, you're going to revert to the slower speed. So it's kind of like if we're all running together and I'm the slowest guy, you're all going to have to run at my speed, right? Because um, otherwise you'd leave me behind. Uh, PCI-X 2.0 actually is even faster. It goes 266 megahertz or 533 megahertz. Um, but it has been pretty much quickly replaced by PCIe. Uh, so you're not going to see a lot of PCI or PCI-X in most motherboards today. I think our computers have like one slot in there for backwards compatibility, but pretty much everything else is PCIe, which stands for PCI Express, Express meaning faster. AGP. So in the late 90s, we needed a better way to do graphics because video gaming became better and more people wanted to do it. So we had created this thing called AGP, Advanced Graphics Processing. Uh, it is a highly embraced by 3D gamers, or was. It's kind of old now. Um, and they had versions 1X, 2X, 4X, and 8X. Um, and there's some power usages I have here on the board. You don't need to memorize this. If you're taking the new a exam, the 901, AGP doesn't even make the cut. It's not even discussed in the new curriculum. If you're taking the old 801 exam, it's still um, able to be asked. But since it was cut from 901, you probably won't see many questions on it, right? Um, what you really need to know about AGP AGP is graphics. It's an expansion card for graphics. If you know that, you're good on AGP. The chances of you running across one of these in the field is very slim. They've been getting phased out of the market over the last decade because we have PCIe, which kind of replaced it. So PCIe replaced PCI and PCIX, and it also replaced AGP. So pretty much everything now for expansion cards is pretty much uh, PCIe. And what PCIe is, it stands for PCI Express. It began replacing all this old stuff in 2005 and has done a great job of it. There are four versions out there. There is a 1X, a 4X, an 8X, and a 16X. Um, you won't see 8X very commonly. I have not run across them. Most motherboards you're going to see are going to have 1X, maybe a 4X in there, and they're going to have 16Xs. The X talks about how big the actual slot is. So if you look at the card on the top, that is a 1X card. See how little those little nubs are that are going to make contact? You go down to the bottom one here, look how long it is. That's a 16X card. Much, much bigger, right? Um, the PCI-X 1 and 4 are designed to replace PCI slots. So they're used for things like modems and network cards and USB headers, uh, or excuse me, USB expansion slots and things like that, input-output devices. 16X was pretty much designed to replace AGP. It's made for graphics. It's very, very fast. It has a lot of throughput. 
and it can do a lot of work when you're talking graphics. So it's really, really good for that. Um, between the two of these, PCIe has pretty much replaced all the PCI, PCIX, and AGP stuff. <clears throat> uh, mini PCI. You're going to see mini PCI inside of laptops. Okay? It was developed for use in laptops and small PCs like H uh, home theater PCs uh, that require smaller form factors expansion cards because these other slot, these other cards are way too big to fit in a laptop. So these are very small, a little smaller than a credit card. They're a subset of PCI interface used by PCI and PCIe. They either operate as a type 1, type 2, or type 3. Uh, type 1 and type 2 are 100 pin used for Ethernet. You won't see those very often anymore because most Ethernet on laptops are in integrated onto the motherboard. Usually what you're going to see this for is either a Wi-Fi card or an internal cellular modem for a laptop. Those are the two things you're going to see them and they're both 124 pins. For the exam, what do you need to know about this? Mini PCI equals expansion for laptops. Usually used for Wi-Fi. You don't need to memorize the actual pin numbers. Okay? Um, and what they look like is right there. You can see we have this popped in there. Uh, very small. The big difference is with the original um, expansion cards we talked about, they go in vertically at a 90 degree angle to the motherboard. With these, they slide in at about a 45 degree angle and then click down. So they come in at more of an angle. And then we mentioned memory. We'll, we'll talk uh, very briefly about memory here. Uh, so memory is another thing that we can expand on the motherboard. Uh, we have expansion slots for more memory, and this is one of the easiest and most frequent things that you will do as an A-plus technician, because often the computer is running slow because it needs more memory. Okay? Um, up here is a list of a couple of different types of memory. SDRAM is really old. You're not going to see it very often. In fact, I would be very surprised if you ever run across it. Uh, DDR, late 1990s. So again, you're probably not going to run into it. DDR2 and DDR3, uh, early 2000s and late 2000s. Um, both of those are still in use today. Not as much DDR2, but definitely DDR3. Um, so you'll see those. Um, both of them are 240 pin. Um, big difference here is that they have different keying. And when I talk about keying, what I'm talking about is this little notch here in the center. So when you go to put it in, if you notice this notch is further to the left than this one, this is a DDR2, this is a DDR3 slot. Um, and then you also have, uh, see here, you can see the notching. Uh, excuse me, that's the DDR2, that's the DDR3. DDR2 is more to the right, DDR3 is more to the left. Um, but basically, you can't put a 2 in a 3 slot. It physically won't fit, okay? Even though they're the same size uh, across. And we'll talk more about memory in a later lecture. We have dedicated completely to memory and all different types that we have. The last type of expansion slot we're going to talk about is an AMR and a CNR. So the AMR is what's called an audio modem riser. Okay? It allows for analog modems and audio connectors to sit on a riser card. Now, how often do you think you're going to use an AMR, considering it has a modem in it? Probably not at all, because this is the year 2016. We don't really use modems nowadays, right? Unless they're a big external cable modem, or a DSL modem, or a Fios modem, right? Um, so it's, it's something that will come up, but it's not something you'll find in the field. Uh, a communications network riser is the evolution of an AMR. Uh, it's the newer version because it's network. It actually has six channel audio uh, for digital audio, so good, good audio, as well as home networking functions like Ethernet cards. Um, these are proprietary cards. So if you're going to get one, it's going to be based on your motherboard. So if you bought a Dell computer that needed one of these, it would come with a riser card from Dell. Okay? You're not just going to go down to Best Buy and pick up an AMR or a CMR. Uh, or a CNR and be like, hey, I need one. They're not going to have it in stock. Okay? Um, they're not very common, but essentially what they allow you to do is if you're dealing with something that's a small form factor, it will create a vertical surface like this middle picture and then allow that card to come off to create more space with these smaller boards. That's all they're used for. Um, I would know what AMR and CMR are. You won't really see them in the world in, in your daily life, but for the tests, I have seen questions asking what they are or what they're used for. Okay? Um, AMR is used for audio modems. Uh, CNRs are used for network and digital audio. And here is a sample question. Which of the following expansion slots can only be found on a desktop computer? What do you guys think? 
a PCI Express, right? Because again, those cards are too big to fit in a laptop. Um, we didn't talk about Express Card 34 or 54 yet. We will when we cover laptops. They're specific to laptops only. Uh, and PCM PCMCIA is also another laptop expansion card. But PCI Express is the one we're talking about. It is used for desktop computers only. It will not fit in a laptop.